Hi everyone, Shinny Ferguson, just outside Jerusalem. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make these videos every day because we do have a lot going on, but I am going to try to keep you as updated as possible and give you, uh, cover different topics on different days because there's just a, a lot going on. Um, today I, I will probably cover um, media and media is important because it is essentially the way that Israel communicates with the world. And usually Israel is on the negative side of the media. And let me explain a little bit why. Um, in Israeli culture and in Jewish culture, there is a very strong sanctity for life and honor and honoring um, honoring the dead. And so what has happened in past operations and past wars is that when there are attacks and there's been very bloody attacks, Israel doesn't photograph them and send them to the media because it's dishonoring to the family. They don't want the family and loved ones to be exposed to photos of their loved ones um, online. On the other side, um, if I'm sure you've come across uh, a terrible photos of um, wounded or dead Palestinians or funerals of parading um, bodies through the streets, mass um, rage. What you'll find in Jewish funerals is a lot of sorrow, deep, deep mourning. You won't find the rage um, that you find on the other side because they use these their funerals to um, stir up anger and hatred, which they um, they develop from a very young age when it comes to Israel. And so what has happened in the past is that people see photos and videos of um, Palestinians uh, wounded or dead, and they think, oh my goodness, this is terrible, but they never see the Jewish suffering because we don't post it, because it's dishonoring. And we understand that it makes us look, um, uh, you know, in, in, you can't think of the word, in, penetrable or um, un, like, unable to suffer. Um, but this is a choice that Israel has made for, for many, many years. What happened, what changed in this situation was that the terrorist infiltrator, which at this point they found 1,500 um, bodies of terrorists strewn across uh, the, um, the south, um, and recovered and that's just the ones that they've found so far uh, and those terrorists were the ones who filmed and posted the atrocities that they were doing so what ended up happening is the world was looking the terrorists thought that they were doing something amazing because they were shaming the Jewish people they were showing them as weak they were showing them bullying little children they were showing old people in humiliated um, positions. So to the Arab world um, and the Muslim world, they look like heroes, but to every other sane human, um, including in the Muslim and Arab world, who uh, does value life and does think these things are atrocious, it, it entirely backfired on them. It's the first time that the European Union and a lot of people, and a lot of leaders from different countries have seen the atrocities that we've been dealing with for decades. Um, of course, this was on such a greater level that it just compounded the fact that it showed who we're dealing with. And um, so today, Israel allowed the foreign media to come in and film a village that was basically entirely wiped out, um, either murdered or kidnapped. Um, people were in their bomb shelters, and uh, if the terrorists couldn't get in there, and kill them, they set fire to their houses and burn them down with them inside. It just, the, and then, so people were filming um, when it happened. Of course, photos and videos were sent to among, um, you know, not the official media, but WhatsApp groups or the loved ones or whatever to show what was happening, but they weren't shown and they still aren't being shown by Israeli media because again, it's dishonoring. And so they, they did allow the U.S., um, sorry, the international media to come in and, and film the atrocities. And they still said, look, these are homes. This is not 
these, these, this is private property and so you can't go into the houses and see the atrocities inside the houses. We still want to respect that, but you can film the outside and see an entire village that was wiped out among the many that were that were damaged and, and destroyed and um, that has changed things uh, similar to the way that um, other events worldwide when you can show footage of what happened it just really grips people and so that is a significant shift in Israel's approach even letting them come and film the outside to see um, what happened is um, is a big deal and I hope that it um, makes has the impact um, that it needs to have on people that have either sat on the sidelines or um, or or been against. Um, so there's a lot more to say, but I do. I do want to say, because a lot of you have been asking, what can we do? I know we're praying, I know we're, number one, share, share that this is happening, give out the information. There's a lot of people that are not sitting and watching the news like you guys are, they don't have access to um, Israelis on the ground, and so they're just getting whatever there is. I would also encourage you, if you have children, be aware of what they're seeing. There are some really, really gory videos out there and uh, they're probably running on all the, the TikToks and the social media and WhatsApps. Be aware of what they're watching because there's a reason that soldiers come back from the field with PTSD from the things that they saw. And there's there's just things that we don't need to see. So it's, it's okay if you wanna see enough to be aware of how bad it is, but uh, a lot of times kids will just be, um, and, and adults will be drawn to, oh my goodness, this is so unbelievably terrible and then you just don't realize how much you're digesting and it's humans are not supposed to be exposed to that level of um, horror and so I would encourage you to be aware um, of what your kids are watching encourage them not to expose themselves and if you're watching the news non-stop we're not doing that it's not healthy for us I'm getting off to go be with my children we've got work to do in the background uh, we did have a lot of people ask what what they can do. Um, we have a fund that we set up. It is at Maoz Israel, M-A-O-Z-I-S-R-A-E-L, maozisrael.org forward slash war. If you're asking yourself, you can give with confidence. Maoz Israel has the highest ratings on Charity Navigator, which is four star and the highest on GuideStar, which is also candid. It's platinum status. The money goes where we say it's gonna go. Um, we are currently, we have a lot, we've been here 45 years. We have a lot of contacts in the country, a lot of ways to get um, supplies to people in need. We're not currently going down south because it is dangerous. There are still uh, terrorists out there uh, potentially, and we don't want to add ourselves to the number of people that these soldiers have to protect. But we do have access to people down there. We um, are able to get supplies to families and um, any of the soldiers that uh, need food or basic supplies. So you can go to maozisrael.org forward slash war and give there. You can write us if you have any questions. We have um, some significant gifts that are coming in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This isn't going to be a short war. And so we're not running outside to spend it all at once. There's so much, there's so much to do. There's so much to do. But thank you for caring. Thank you for giving. And I will do my best to keep you updated. Um, but again, my priorities are here and I appreciate you caring. Bye-bye.